morning, Pat. Thanks for your time. You said after Saturday's game that you, you and Sean and, and Mike meant it probably needed time to reflect on why um, there wasn't as much accountability as you guys want. Having had a few days to reflect on that, have you come up with any answers? Uh, yeah, I mean, it just goes back to, you know, executing um, the plays that um, we're told to run and just kind of executing um, just in practice, showing up every single day with the mentality to get better. Um, I think that, you know, obviously after the first couple of losses, um, you know, maybe our execution lacked in practice that week. And, you know, I thought our Thursday walkthrough was one of our best walkthroughs that we've had. Um, but, you know, like I said, after the game, we can't just do the things that we're supposed to do in practice and then go out to the game and just lose all our detail and all our attention to um, detail and just kind of do our own thing. So I think that's something that, you know, we need to really harp on this week is, you know, do the correct things in practice like we're doing. But when we go out to Nebraska on Saturday, um, you know, do the things that we're doing in practice to to, to put us in the best position to win. Milton Hayes. Hey, Pat. How are you doing this morning? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Hey, um, you know, looking at the first three games, notice Sean's um, got a lot of carries, 52 so far. Um, you know, I know that durability last year he was a little banged up as the season progressed um ended up missing the uh regular season finale uh what are some ways you all have been working you know early this week to kind of develop more of that run game um by getting uh Devin Ford and, and those guys involved to kind of take the wear and tear off Sean um yeah I think I mean I think if you if you ask Sean he's gonna say the same thing that I'm about to say is you know he wants the ball in his hands and he wants to be able to make plays and I think you know, Cliff's a very good runner with the ball, and he makes good cuts and good reads. Um, so, you know, and that's the beauty of our offense. I mean, if, if, it, uh, if the defenses want to take away our, our running backs, then we're going to run with the quarterbacks. And I think, you know, he does a great job with that. And, you know, um, I mean, we haven't really kind of talked about that um, yet going into because we haven't gone out to the practice field. But, I mean, I'm sure we're definitely going to try and get our running game going. But if that's with Devin or, or Zaya or, or Kevon or Cliff or Will or with whoever – then um, we're going to do that. And um, I think, I mean, Cliff's definitely capable of, of carrying that many times. And, I mean, I'm with him every single day. He's taking care of his body. And um, it's just whoever makes the opportunity in the run game is going to make that opportunity. Oh, Donahue? Good morning, Pat. Thanks for meeting with us this morning. Um, when you look at a guy like Jahan Dotson, who yeah, everyone says he's quiet, not really a vocal guy, while you were talking in post game on Saturday night, he was as well, and he had a lot to say uh, about distracting, about buy in within the locker room. When someone like him goes on the record with those kind of statements, does it does it send it, make a stronger impact than if maybe another guy was doing it? And and he said he wanted everybody in the building on Monday, even though it was a day off. Is that what things worked out? Uh, yeah. So I mean. Um... John, obviously, with his comments, I mean, I, I completely agree with them. And I think that, you know, it, it means a lot that, you know, obviously a quiet kid like Jahan, who doesn't really voice his opinion, just kind of come in and does his thing and, and help, tries to do anything he can to help the team win. But him speaking up vocally, um, obviously, you know, it, it really hits his different because, um, like you said, he's quiet and doesn't really talk much. So, I mean, and, and all the stuff he said was true. And, and with him being so quiet and, and kind of not really voicing his opinion, it means a lot more coming from him because, I mean, we're all thinking it and we're all trying to get that point across as captains. But with Jahan coming um, out of really nowhere, just kind of say that things, it really it really helped because, you know, kids that maybe were just kind of thinking like, oh, the captains are just saying it because they're just saying it and they don't really think it's true. Well, well it is true. Um, so, you know, um, we just have to come into the uh, this week and, and you know, work hard and put our focus on Nebraska and kind of just not really think about the past and just focus on this week and, I think we got off to a good start Monday doing or yesterday doing that with, you know, I saw the majority of the offense and defense and special teams in the building, you know, if that was going out to run extra routes um, or if that was going to get an extra lift in or watching an extra film. And, you know, I think that, you know, the, the team's really trying to take this next step and to get in our first win. And, I mean, losing's never, uh, losing's never fun. And obviously we're just trying to get to that 1-0 uh, this week. Corey Geiger. Hi, Pat. I know this can sound unfair. Um, there have been some players around the country who have opted out after their team's slow starts. Are you committed to playing the whole season, no matter what happens, team record-wise, that kind of thing? 
yeah, I'm I'm committed to Penn State till um, till I decide my time's up here. Um, like I said before, I love this university. I love this 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 program. I love the coaches. I love the players in it. And, um, you know, I'm with them in the good times and the bad times, and I just can't. That's not my personality. Just walk away um, when we're down and, and the program's down. You know, I'm, I'm gonna f- get up and fight back and and try and um, get get us our first win this season and, and do anything I can to make this program um, go on the next step. So. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I haven't even thought that. It's never crossed my mind to opt out uh, after our slow start. Bye, Swellborn. Um, Pat, when you look at everything, last week you mentioned after the game, talking about the running game and the blocking schemes. From your perspective as a tight end, what have you picked up in the film over the last couple of days, kind of maybe some things you guys could do better to get the running backs going, get the running game going in general? <laughs> I mean, I think this goes back to doing things in practice that we, we don't do in games. I mean, I, th- I think in practice, our run game looks solid because we communicate all the time. We point out our IDs and we, and we point out who we're supposed to be blocking and, and our communication and our combos and all that. And we, and we do that in practice. And, and Thursday was, was probably our best day doing that in our walkthrough. And we get into the games and, and it's just we don't communicate. So, I mean, that, that's on me um, as a leader of the offense. And, and that's on Bennett as well. Just kind of, you know, we need to communicate throughout the whole offensive line and we need to communicate who we're, who we're uh, blocking to. I mean, let's be honest, it doesn't really matter if the defense knows that we're going to, if I'm blocking a specific player, I mean, it's still, we're still going to have, they're going to have to execute the, their rules and I'm, we're going to have to execute, execute our rules. So I mean, at the end of the day, we just have to communicate and, and tell people um, who we're comboing to and all that. And um, I think that will be a, a huge next step uh, in our, in our run game that will help us a lot to make sure everyone's on the same page. Joe Giuliano. Well, good morning, Pat. Thanks for your time. Um, through three games, uh, it's been like, you know, you've, you've talked about not listening, uh, guys not listening and, and not paying attention to detail or not communicating. Uh, Coach Franklin has built a pretty good culture <laughs> over the years at Penn State. Do you feel that there's a culture issue on this team? Absolutely not. I don't, I don't think it's a culture thing at all. I think, you know, Coach Franklin, like you said, he's built a great culture in this program and, and the culture just doesn't go away that quickly from from last year to this year. And I think um, it's just it's just going back to you know just buying in. I mean, I think that there are certain players on the team that and uh, and that need to buy in and continue to trust the coaches. We just can't go out on game days and try and make individual plays and, and play outside the framework of the defense or the offense or the special teams. We need to do what we're told to do. And in that, if everyone does their job, then you're going to be able to make plays. You can't just go out and go rogue go outside of the framework and try to make plays yourselves. You know, the, the defense is built for a specific reason. Um, the offense is built for a specific reason, including the special teams. And we need to go out and execute that, and the plays will come. I mean, with uh, with, with team success comes individual success. And we just got to make sure that we are all bought into that mentality and, and we just keep looking out for each other. Audrey Snyder. Hey, Bet. Thanks for meeting with us this morning. Um what has has the relationship been like between you and Sean during this 0-3 start? Um, do you have to say anything to make sure he's in the right headspace? Um, how do you kind of go about continuing to bolster that relationship? Yeah, I mean, me, 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 Cliff, and, and Bennett, um, uh, we all had we all we all have a great relationship. Obviously, being the three offensive captains and I think kind of the leaders of this team, um, we have a great relationship, and we, and we always have tough, tough conversations with each other. Um, you know, they're. Cliff's definitely my, my, my brother for life, and me and him, you know, we're, we're best friends. But um, at the end of the day, uh, we want to see each other succeed, and um, we're always willing to have those tough conversations with each other. And, I mean, after the game, uh, the three of us, we had we had tough conversations with each other, and we, we kind of addressed what we needed to get better for the team and what the team needs to get better at. And, um, you know, that, that's what I think makes a, a friendship a great one is when you can be realistic and not just sugarcoat everything, you know. You can really have those heart-to-heart and know that, they're not coming for you or trying to disrespect you at all. They just really want you to be um, at your best. And so, I mean, he, he told things that I need to get better at, and I told him things that he needs to get better at. And so, you know, we took those to heart, and, and we're going to, you know, come out here in this, this week of practice, and we're going to continue to work and, and just get better at those things. Danny Collins? Pat, are those tough conversations that you guys can have as captains and, and veterans on the team uh, is, are, are those sometimes difficult for younger players to to take the same things out of it that you guys can just haven't been around? 
Yeah, it's definitely challenging. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking back to, you know, my freshman year when I was coming in. Obviously, I played a lot. And, you know, if I wasn't uh, practicing up to the standard, I mean, I mean, Trace would, would always um, come at me and tell me to pick it up and everything, you know, in, in, in a way that a leader should. And, you know, sometimes um, I would get butt hurt about it and I would kind of be like, well, what is, he, what is he talking about? Like, I am practicing hard, but maybe I wasn't executing the right, correct way. And I think it's definitely challenging because obviously growing up in a program, you're more mature now. And, um, you know, me, Cliff and Mennett and the older guys in the offense, like we can see what needs to be done and what those tough conversations need to be had. But it's definitely tough as an underclassman because you're just there's just so many things going on because, you know, the game is still kind of fast for you. You're still trying to learn the offense. You're still trying to execute. Um, just trying to think about what you're doing, not the offensive scheme in general. So when you add another layer of, you know, people telling you what you need to do as to, you know, grow up and kind of, you know, take that next step, it's definitely challenging because you don't want to disappoint those leaders, but you also need to figure out what you need to do for yourself. So it's definitely challenging. But, you know, I think the younger guys have taken a great step and they're very mature. Um, and I think, you know, that we just need to continue to have these conversations until we get it fixed. Frank Marzano. Uh, hey Pat, thank you for your time. Um, when uh, Jahan said that uh, that everyone's not really moving as a one unit right now, and uh, there's a lot of guys that are making individual plays, um, would you say that that's because of uh, mainly that the the fact that the team doesn't have many opportunities to get together off the field to um, for a chance for good team bonding because uh, of COVID? Um, I mean, no. I mean, our rules in the program are obviously. We're our own bubble, so I mean, we hang out all the time with each other. It's not like we can hang, we can only come in the building and see each other at practice. I mean, we hang out with each other all the time. Obviously, not in like big groups and everything, but like we hang out with our guys. We hang out with the people on our team who we're closest with, and including the people that we're not as close with. I mean, I've hung out with a couple of the freshmen. I've taken them out to dinner, and I'm, I'm just trying to build that relationship. Obviously, because you know, without summer, you don't really get to interact with those guys because they weren't the freshmen came in later. Um, but you know, it, it's definitely, it's definitely challenging kind of not, you know, having those team bonding, like we can go to the pool like we did last year or go to champs or, or whatever, um, as a team event, but it's definitely challenging and, and definitely hard, but I think we've done a good job trying to adjust. I think, I mean, it's not, it's not a culture thing. I mean, we're all, we all love each other and there's no like issues with teammates. It's just kind of the attention to detail and doing things in practice that, you know, that we don't translate into the games. Justin Morgenstein. Hey, Pat. Uh, thanks for doing this, man. What have you kind of seen out of Parker Washington so far and his growth? And kind of what are you excited about for his future? Yeah, Parker, I've been impressed with Parker since day one. I mean, he showed up and, I mean, he, he's uh, he's very mature. Um, he's a great football player. And he always came in ready to work um, in the summer. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's paying dividends to him right now. And, um, you know, he came out um, in camp and he dominated. And he's getting the opportunity that he deserves. Um, and when the ball comes his way, he goes up and gets it and makes plays. And, um, you know, he's going to be a great receiver here for a long time. And, I mean, he, he's going to be the first one to tell you as well. Like, he's very mature, and he's going to be the first to tell you that he wishes that, you know, the team would be 3-0 and instead of him having all these great catches and great and touchdowns and everything like that. So, um, you know, he, he's, a great, he's a great football player, and he's a great guy. Um, I'm excited to see what he does in, the, in his future here. All right, we've got time for a couple more. We'll go to um, Peter Terpster and Nate Bauer, please. So we'll go to uh, Peter. Hey, Pat. Um, I've heard coaches say it's never as bad as you think it is after a hard loss, and it's never as good as you think it is after a big win. How close, after you know analyzing the first three games, how close are you guys to turning this thing around? Yeah, we're, I mean, we're right there. I mean, it just goes back to, you know, like I'm gonna say it all the time, it just goes back to that attention to detail. Um, you know, we can't just go out there and, and do whatever we want. Um, you know, there's flashes of you know we think we're we think we're like winning the game by 100, and there's flashes where it's like what are we doing? Um, so it's just inconsistent. Um, you know, there's there's points in the game where um, we were executing really well, um, but there's also points where it's just kind of like we we've, we've never done this before, so why are we doing it now? Um, so, I mean, there's definitely some good things, definitely some bad things, but we just got to stay more consistent and, and focus on, you know, executing uh, every single play as its own play and that one play mentality. Do last question here for Nate Bowen. Pat, how, how do you guys dissect or evaluate turnovers? 
Like, I think we look at the guy who had the fumble or threw the interception. Like, how do you guys break it down? Yeah, um, so uh, that goes back to, you know, the, the O-line and, and the receivers running the correct route or the correct depth. And obviously that goes back to Cliff's decision-making. I mean, obviously, I don't think it's the majority of Cliff's interceptions or turnovers is is as should be going to other people except him. That's, that's the frustrating thing is because, you know, the media and, and other people think it's just Cliff turning the ball over and it's, it's his fault. But in reality, if we could go back to every turnover that he's had, we could have pointed to four other guys in the field that led up to things that caused that turnover. So, I mean, I think Cliff, Cliff's doing everything that he needs to do. And I think Cliff, obviously, there's some things that he needs to um, correct in his decision-making, and we've talked about that. But the majority of his turnovers haven't been him. Um, it, it's been other people that um, wasn't executing the correct way or correct uh, or making the correct block or running the right, running the right route. So, um if we could go back and, and pinpoint those um, turnovers, I mean, I would say only really two or three of them were really his. Um, so, um, you know, the whole offense is to get better and communicate better and we need to get better with our decision making. But, um, yeah, we just need to stop turning the ball over and, and, and fix that definitely in today in practice.